In this video, we'll go through the third postulate of quantum mechanics, which begins to tell us a little bit about the measurement process uh, in quantum systems. This will lead us into the idea of uh, expectation values of operators. So the third postulate states that the only possible result of a measurement of a physical observable, which we're denoting by little q, is always one of the eigenvalues of the corresponding operator. Each eigenvalue has a different probability of uh, coming up. So the value of the observable uh, has different values, has different probabilities of giving a certain value. So uh, one way of thinking about this is, for example, if you have uh, a room of people with different heights, uh, if you make a measurement on uh, of height, then you have to pick out uh, a certain person with a certain given height. You can't get a value, uh, for example, of an average of the height. It has to be one of the heights that already exists in the room. So what uh, does this postulate mean if for uh, a general state? So for a general state that we're denoting by cat psi, uh, and if you remember in uh, a previous video, uh, we said an operator has a set of uh, eigenfunctions which we're going to say are normalized for simplicity, uh, which form a complete and orthonormal basis in which you can express any state as a linear superposition of these uh, eigenfunctions. So what this means is you can express any state uh, like this for a discrete spectrum, where again, CI is given by uh, the inner product of the corresponding eigenfunction with your general state. Okay, so we're gonna try to make a measurement in this state of the observable corresponding to this operator Q hat. So to do that, we operate on that state. So because operators act on cats, we can bring this inside of the sum. And we get something like this. And since uh, postulate two said that uh, for uh, when we try to make a measurement uh, with an operator on one of the eigenfunctions, this is described by an eigenvalue equation. So you just uh, get the value of your observable. Uh, as the eigenvalue, uh, which we're going to denote by QI. So that means that we can replace Q hat cat KI by the number QI times this. Uh, this doesn't help us very much in interpreting this because we still have this abstract quantity QI. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get rid of this QI by using orthonormality. Uh, 
uh, so we're using the orthonormality of uh, the set of QIs. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to operate on the left-hand side with bra psi. Okay, so this is what we had up here. And now we're just adding a bra on the left-hand side. And what that means is the bra in this particular case is represented by this quantity. So it's still a linear superposition, but uh, with the cat turned into a bra and this uh, turned into its complex conjugate. Uh, we'll use J over here to differentiate the two indices. So this will be I. And over here, we just retain what we had to begin with. We're going to combine the two sums together. And because these quantities are just numbers, uh, they can remain inside for now. So all of this just gives you, in general, some complex number. So what that means is they can be taken out over here. Uh, complex numbers are um, commutative or distributive. They can, whether you multiply this with uh, over here or over here or out here, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're left with uh, some number over here and the inner product of the eigenfunction qj and qi. And by orthonormality of this basis set, we know that the inner product uh, is given by the Kronecker delta. So it's either one if these two are the same eigenfunctions or zero if they're different ones. So here I've just replaced the inner product by the Kronecker delta. And what this does is it kills any term where i is not equal to j. And what that means then is one of the sum uh, collapses into a single term. And it doesn't matter whether you choose the index i or j, they're just dummy indices. So uh, this is zero whenever j is not equal to i. So that means that this has to become an i. It's the only non-zero term. And then all of the other eyes remain the same like that. Because this is the same uh, number, just complex conjugated. This gives you the square modulus of that number. And what you should notice is this is starting to look a lot like the uh, expression for an expectation value of uh, a random variable. Okay, so if you think of a random variable Q, which can take on values Q1, Q2, all the way to Qn, the expectation value of Q will be equal to the probability. Uh, so this is with probability P1, P2, or Pn, 
then the expectation value is the sum of the probability of each event occurring times the value of that event. So what we found over here is we're beginning to get a glimpse of the probabilistic interpretation of quantum mechanics, which says that the expectation value uh, of an operator corresponding to a physical observable uh, will be related to the square modulus of the probability amplitudes. Okay, so what you should uh, be looking at over here is the probability of QI occurring is equal to uh, the square modulus of CI. And remember CI over here is just the, what we're calling the probability amplitude when we expand a state in a given basis. So this will actually lead us into the fourth postulate of quantum mechanics, which uh, uh, gives a full uh, interpretation of the probability aspect of quantum mechanics. <clears throat>